Episode 254, the ASMR edition. I'm your host, Chris Britton. Just kidding, let's go. Dialage for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffMink.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of your latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffMink.com, where you can also use code DIAL5 at checkout for 5% off your order. Joining me in the studio again this week is my sexy ranch hand co host, Calder Ness. What's going on, Calder? Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. Did you, <laughs> did you like that? Yeah, yeah, that was I pretty wonder, good. That I was wonder, pretty good. I wonder if someone was like, oh my, yes, I've, won, I've been waiting for this. No one asked for that. No it's like, no way anyone was waiting for us to do an ASMR episode. We, like, we will never do that, just so everybody knows that. <laughs> 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 What's going on, man? I haven't talked to you uh, in, like, what, dude, two episodes? The episode where you yeah, like, blatantly admitted that I'm better at Roblox than you? and Yeah, you know, that, I don't know why. I was feeling really off uh, off my game that day. I don't know yeah. what it was. It was all those pizones put me into a <clears throat> trance or something. <laughs> don't know what it was. Uh, but in real life, shout outs to Edward Shelton, Dark Logos, for uh, letting us do a fun little swap. If you haven't listened to my side, you should go to his. I, I, can't, I haven't even talked about it since then, but uh, go to his YouTube channel, Starting Over Podcast. And go listen to me pretend to be Edward if you enjoyed Edward pretending to be me because it was pretty good. I had a lot of fun. That was that was a really fun. That episode. was a great episode. What people out there don't know is that afterwards, I think Edward and I ended up talking for like another hour, hour and oh, a half really? or something. Oh. Yeah, like it was just really cool. So Edward's a good dude. You can just sit there and you know shoot crap with him, stuff like yep. that. So uh, I had a lot of fun, but. We are indeed a Hero Clicks podcast. We like to bring you up to date information about the game and other nerd related content. But before we do that, let's start off with what we normally start off with. What made you happy this week, Sir Calder? Okay, so finally, it's been a long time coming, but Avengers Endgame is coming up. But last year. Oh my God. What, <laughs> oh my God. What made me happy was, like, sometime last year or whatever, is that I bought a Captain America 1 6th scale uh, collectible action figure from Hot Toys slash side, uh, Sideshow Collectibles, and it finally arrived. Yeah, so a week before Endgame, I finally got it. And it is it's like a 12-inch Captain America figure. He's got, like, real clothes, and the face is, like, this perfectly sculpted Chris Evans face. The eyes, like, gleam and stuff in the right light. It's sick. <laughs> it's like, it's, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. It's got, it's really cool. The shields move and stuff like that. Like, they pop out. He's got the, um, Corvus Glaive's glaive, whatever. He's got the stick that's thrown at him, and he catches it, you know, in the subway, so. Well, Proxima Midnight. Whatever. Whichever. I mean, he's got them both. He's got the that stick, and he's got Corvus's stick. He's just dual-wielding sticks? He's got, I mean, he can. I've got him with one of the Asgardian... Uh, not Asgardian, but one of the Wakandan shields, and okay. the, the stick that whoever threw him at the subway, Proxima, that chick. So, yeah, that's what I've got him with. I think that's pretty sweet. That's so, yeah. really cool. Yeah, that, uh, that finally came in. It's, like, one of the sickest. Uh, he also comes with, like, a part of an Outrider. So, like, a dead Outrider is just on his base, which is really cool. So he's, like, standing above it. So I'm really happy I finally got that in. Well worth the wait. It was It's an amazing figure. Right on. Uh, so I posted – I think I said this last episode. I posted a picture of my new command center. So I wanted to say thanks for everybody that liked the photo, and I think I got some retweets on it. So I was like, oh, yeah, you guys you guys liked it. I'm glad you did. So that was still have cool. those uh, the same Ninja Turtles. I, I really appreciate that. You still got those up there on your uh, monitor. Oh, you noticed that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I always keep them right there. I freaking love them. <laughs> Good stuff. Um Let's see, what what else made me happy this week was, as I mentioned on the last episode, uh, World War Z, the video game, came out, and I could not be more happy about it. It's got, like, a little bit, like, some, I have some qualms with a couple of the little things, but they're, <laughs> they're so overshadowed by how freaking awesome the game is. I've just been killing the Zambles, like, all over the place. Zambles. This guy so, is Zambles. The Zambles, uh, and my brother and I have been playing it together. Um, it's weird because you can't do online matchmaking and have it a private party right now. They said that they're going to address that, which leads me to segue into something. Um, now, this is a bigger company, right? Uh, 
I can't even remember what the Saber Interactive or something, I think, are the people that put out the, the game. Anyway, within like a few minutes, basically, of them releasing this game, people are tweeting at this company, and this company is already responding. They're like, we're going to fix this. We're going to have a roadmap. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, man, this, this company is on the ball, which led me to remember that WizKids never is. Oh, so man. I was like, <laughs> oh. I was like why can't why can't we just get like a you know like a how are you guys doing tweet or something from WizKids and then I remember I remember that it's not a good company <laughs> it's not it's not a good company uh, but I have been having a lot of fun playing World War Z so as soon as awesome. uh, I was awesome. playing it before we started recording tonight yeah or okay so actually it's Saturday night for us but this episode is going to be coming out on Sunday for you guys. Um, and, uh, as soon as we get done recording, I'm going to go back to killing the Zambles. This because guy. Oh, my it's, gosh. It's so much fun. Oh, it's so <laughs> good. It's so good. If anybody wants to play on PS4, let me know. I will absolutely play. I mean, we can kill the Zambles together. All right. Zambles. Let's get into the news section. Hey guys, I heard you like OP kits, so we got you an OP kit thing to talk about. Yep, all us. We did it. We totally got you that OP <laughs> kit. Just us. Dial H for Heroclix exclusive. Punisher. <laughs> Daredevil. Bullseye. Let's start off with Punisher. The probably, arguably, least cool. I don't think this is a bad little OP kit. One of the figures is pretty good. But let's start off with Punisher. I think there's better Punishers out there, but 75 points. Uh, was five clicks long. He has one trait called One Man War. When Punisher KOs an opposing character after resolutions, heal him of one click. That's pretty good. He's got improved uh, targeting, ignores hindering terrain, and then he also has running shot stealth. Why did they not give him ignores hindering terrain for movement You would purposes? think, huh? You would think. Why would you do <sighs> that? Okay, eight speed with a special speed power... 11 attack with energy explosion, but he only has 6 range, and he only has 1 bolt. But he does have Indom for a 75-point Punisher. So that was pretty cool. 17 defense with toughness, and 3 damage with range combat expert. He has the Spider-Man team ability. Uh, he's okay. Uh, his, his attack maintains at least a 10. So yeah, that's nice. 5 clicks. Uh, and then at the end of the dial, he goes into a plasticity blades combat reflexes dial on the whopping five clicks of long. So he's he's okay, guys. The I the best part about this Punisher is that he's apparently taken from this Daredevil versus Punisher means and ends. And I've actually read this full like four or five issue little Punisher versus Daredevil fight. It's actually a really good comic. So is, uh, is this an yeah. accurate representation of that read? Oh uh, yeah, he did actually just end up boxing like wrestling daredevil at the end but um the whole energy explosion thing I, don't, I really don't know about that it's been a while since i've read it but uh the end dial yeah that's pretty accurate right on all right next up is bullseye i would say he's very reminiscent of past bullseyes i'd say he's better than the uh civil war bullseye for sure he he reminds me of the, the uh, deadpool the 2014 bullseye he has dark avengers thunderbolts assassin a martial arts keyword special attack power no traits on this guy i never miss Precision Strike, but can instead target more than one character. So, unchanged, unnerfed Precision Strike, like 2013 Precision Strike, which is cool. Uh, he has improved targeting, ignores hindering and characters, which is sick. Uh, he says, I never miss, and then it's special damage powers ever! Probability control, but only to target himself, which is great. So, what is he looking like? He has no special combat symbols. He has six range, triple bolts. He's only 65 points. He has top dial, well, for the first three clicks, sort of. Uh, running shot, and he has his special attack power for three clicks, special damage power for three clicks. He starts with one click of 17 with ESD, instantly pushes on to an 18 with willpower, another 17 with ESD, or sorry, willpower. And then his last two clicks are sidestep, ESD, range combat expert, Starts with a 3 damage, goes all the way down to a 1 on his last click of his dial for end combat expert. So he, he can do at least 3 damage every single click, which is pretty respectable. I really like this bullseye. I mean, running shot, 12 attack, triple target, you know, like, that's pretty solid. I think he's really good. Now, if we could call him in somehow, now we're talking. Now he's wicked good. But uh, as of right now, he's just a really solid bullseye. Dude, I don't think they've ever made a bad bullseye, though. No, not really. No way. Yeah, I like him. I also like how they always, like, in Marvel Comics, they've never actually released what his last name is that I know of. 
So he just always goes by Lester. He goes by Lester, but what was what was he in? He was like Dot, not Dot. It was D something in what whatever ever season three was. He was like Derek or something. I don't know. I I have no idea. Was he Dex? Was he just Dex? Dex. Dex. Yeah. There, 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 Sorry there, guys, there. we're getting there. <sighs> hey, you know what? I realized um, season two of The Punisher is not good. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I enjoyed really? it. I really did. I'm, I'm still trying to make it through, and I just cannot get into this. It's like, You can tell it's heavily sponsored by Coca-Cola, because, like, whenever he gets something to drink, it's like a Coke, or, like, the girl, too. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I think she's funny. I like the, um, I thought he was Fool Killer. Ah, sorry. Let's, let's not derail into to Punisher talk, but I, I liked season two a lot, actually. All right, we'll we'll agree to disagree on this one. Fair. Let us know. Tweet in or message on Facebook about whether I was right or whether oh, Calder was, or whether Calder was wrong. Either one of those. Oh, um, <laughs> coming in with Daredevil at a whopping uh, 50 points. We have Defenders, Marvel Knights, martial artist keyword. He has one trait called "No one is above the law." Incapacitate. When Daredevil uses incapacitate and hits one or more opposing characters after resolutions, remove an action token from him. Pretty good. I like that. It's got double slash. It says, uh, when Daredevil KOs an opposing character after resolutions, deal him one unavoidable damage. Spoiler alert. That's, like, never going to happen. Here's why. Uh, because <laughs> he has 10 attack and 3 damage on this 50-point dial. Which, it's five clicks long, and it's ten attack the whole time. Hey, yeah. But you're not going to be using him for that. Like, I don't see that really happening. He's got a um, special speed power on the top three top three clicks of his dial, and it's called uh, Protector of Hell's Kitchen. Gives him charge, running shot, and stealth, and ignores hindering for uh, line of fire purposes. He also has improved movement, ignores elevated, and ignores hindering for movement purposes. I just feel like the probably the best way to use a figure, his full range double bolt, is to just running shot and double in cap and freaking just keep the keep the action tokens off of him. Yeah. And just keep in, in capping every freaking time you can with him. So like 50 points, you start off with 10 attack, but it's only 50 points, guys. This is a pretty good little daredevil especially if you're like not a huge fan of daredevil as a character but you like the marvel knights keyword and you're like well i want a daredevil because he's marvel knights but i like punisher better or something like that it's a respectable little guy on click number two and three he has outwit uh three damage on the first three clicks of his dial first three clicks of his dial also he has uh super senses 18 defense to start top dial so I think he's a good little piece. He's a little harassment piece that I feel like they'll probably just have to hit just to deal with, but your points are going to be pumped into something else for your damage, not yeah. just Daredevil. Yeah. I'm going to have to walk my opinion back. He actually is really good. I, I like him a lot. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, yeah, I know. Ah, oh, got me with that. Because um, Calder's a liar. Uh, he's going to go ahead and hit us with some more news. that he like Chris was like, we have any news to talk about at the beginning of the show? And I'm like, nah, we totally don't. Scrolling through Facebook, uh, that was a lie. So our good friend uh, Mark Pollier, I think it's, I think that's how we say his name, um, has been messaging with the podcast about updates about his really cool website, and now he's finally opened the beta for everyone to go check out. Uh, it's cerebro, ah, let's try this again. Cerebro HeroClix database. So go check that out. It's letsclicks.com. So that is up on our our Facebook, and I assume on Twitter too. I don't, I'm bad at this this whole thing. So um, go check out this website. It's really cool. It's kind of like a, it's gonna have a collection part. It's gonna have a team builder part. You can save teams. I really like it. I haven't gotten a lot of time to mess around with it, but it is really cool. So definitely check that out, guys. Here's what I kind of think might happen: is this Let's Click, which I'm really really excited for. Um, it, it's like an alternative to HC Realms, right? right yeah. Now. And, and it, I think it's more community based than HC Realms. I don't really want to put down like HC Realms, but there's some very, very strong personalities on HC Realms that I, I don't really get along with, you know? Because they think everybody else is wrong. <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, if, if you happen to know who we're talking about and you don't really like HC Realms that much, let's build a community together. On Let's Clicks. I think that will be really fun, and I would also like to get him on to uh, the, on the show. Yeah. yeah, on the future. And not just him, I believe it's his wife as well. Yes. So, um, another thing, because I believe we're just going to do the LEs for news, right? 
Yeah. So I totally lied, and we have, like, three more things for news. What a guy. So, Marvel Hero Clips, WizKids OP, or WizKids Opens, uh, it says there's going to be a... Top eight is going to get a Steve Trevor prize figure. Top four is going to get a reverse Flash prize figure. Top two gets a The Flash prize figure. The winner gets an Ambrose Chase prize figure, which is like the box deli, like Thane. Do you know who Ambrose is, Chris? No. Okay, I have no idea. Uh, the best part about this whole thing is that it all says uh, Marvel Hero Clicks, the Flash prize figure. Great. I did not know there was a Marvel Reverse Flash Steve Trevor uh, characters. That's awesome. And, of course, participation prize is going to be a Marvel Hero Clicks a Mandarin Ring Zero Special Object. So we're getting all those. I believe that is it. Ambrose, Flash, blah, 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 blah. And it goes into more about about them. But those are just the figures for our upcoming summer, spring, whatever they're called now, WKOs. Okay, so uh, I type it, it's Ambro, A-M-B-R-O-S-E, right? Ambrose? Yeah, like the Dean guy. Okay, so I typed that into the Marvel Wikipedia real quick. Yeah. And I found somebody named Locust King. I don't know if this is him or not. Oh, no, it's a DC character. They just accidentally well, put definitely Marvel. Definitely not <laughs> that person then. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why they say Marvel Hero Clicks, but uh, they're very clearly supposed to be uh, DC. Flash reverse Flash. Because they've never done a uh, DC character than a Marvel character. Like, I don't know why they did it this way. It's dumb. So, yeah. That's really cool. ROC finally has a little... I don't even know what you'd call this. It's like a Google spreadsheet thing or Google document of all the WKO points. You earn WKO points in ROC events that you can use to get into WizKids events. So you can earn them in ROC events. They're not used for ROC events. And then you can use them in WizKids events. 100 gets you into Nationals. 200 gets you a buy into Worlds. Uh, and then you just open up the spreadsheet. It's once again, it's on the Rock Ion Suite or however their are Yeah, R O C I O N S U I T E dot com, and you can go ahead and find it there. It's under W K O points. And then it will open up a Google document, and you will scroll down. It's by last name first, so you have to find like blah blah blah. Like, um, let's do just Nazario John instead of John Nazario, or Ness Calder instead of Calder Ness. So you just look up your name by N first, and you'll see, not N, but obviously whatever your last name initial is, and you'll see your WKO name, your win name, and then you'll see, like, ah, yes, 57 points, because I don't go to that many ROCs. So, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Now that's it for news. <laughs> no, 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 hold on. we got to oh, go no. back. Well, uh, I, I typed in Ambrose into the DC Wikia this time go. to see, and I realized real quickly why I'm a Marvel guy, because there's an Ambrose from Fables, there's an Ambrose from Earth X, S, there's an Ambrose from New Earth, there's an Ambrose from Earth 1, there's an Ambrose in the Wildstorm universe, and then there's a second Ambrose from Earth S. So your guess is as good as mine on what that could possibly mean. Oh my gosh. The most convoluted history in the of any fiction I've ever seen is the DC universe. It's pretty so, bad. I don't know what's going on half the time. I'm pretty sure even the fans of DC don't even know what's going on half the time. Who could, dude? I don't know. <sighs> but my brother's favorite person Superman, so at least there's that. <laughs> oh. That one's uh, easy. Okay. Uh, that's news, right? We're good? That, that is news. Totally. Right. Let's get to the meat and the potatoes of what this episode was really supposed to be about. because. Oh, agree. We just hadn't been able to sit down and give, like, a review, kind of, uh, like what we typically do when sets come out. Uh, Rebirth is out and about, and people are playing all kinds of, well, they were playing the pre-releases, now they're playing the releases and whatever. So, as typical, we like to go through the set. We each chose a common, an uncommon, a rare, and a super rare. We're going to talk about things like... Kind of like little sleeper figs that you might want to worry about if you are going to be playing with uh, or in a sealed event uh, at your local shop or whatever. Uh, pieces that maybe were probably overlooked in or in the uh, previews or they just weren't even released in previews. Some of these, I'll be completely honest, didn't even know that they were in the set until Oof. this week. So maybe you are also in the same. Bo, as me, Calder, would you like to start off with what was your common that you chose? Uh, my common was Commander Steel, good old Henry Haywood here. I love the Haywood boys, uh, the Steel guys. They are they're my bros. They're like the one thing in this that I even care about. So he is only 40 points. He is the Justice Society team ability. He's All-Star Squadron, Justice Society. It doesn't really matter. He's past Soldier keywords. They really don't matter in Sealed. 
Uh, what's cool is he has Indom, he has Charge, 8 movement charge, 10 attack, super strength, 17 defense with invulnerability, and 3 damage with leadership, top dial. Later, he kind of goes into some sidestep, toughness, and then some empower, which greatest is damage, bumps up to a 4, which is pretty sick. He has 2 traits. Haywood Legacy. When Commander Steel is hit with a close attack after resolution, steal the attacker one penetrating damage. That is so wicked awesome and sealed. You guys have no idea. I I seriously love it way too much. And then the second trait is a simpler time. Once per turn for all characters with this trait, if a character uses the JSA team ability to replace its defense value with Commander Steel's, when targeted with a close attack after resolution, steal the attacker one penetrating damage. That's only targeted. Okay, so Commander Steel is just when he's hit, but not damaged, just hit. He has vulnerability. He's probably going to get, like, one or two damage, right? But this is just if they're targeted with a close combat attack. Like, if they whiff that target, they're taking one penetrating damage. How many people have JSA in this set? There's actually a few, Mr. Terrific, to name one of them, and there are probably others. I honestly don't know. I don't know much about this set. But there are at least, <laughs> there are at least those ones, Okay. At least Mr. Terrific has his terrific ball. Oh, yeah, he does. Actually, they're really good. <laughs> they are really good. <laughs> okay, uh, let's move on. The one that I chose from the common slot that I really think if you pull it, play it, is going to be 001 Deathstroke. And the reason why is because he's got charge and running shot, and he's got pin sight and exploit weakness both of which on top dial, and I took a moment to actually count through, like real quick through the set, there are at least, if I counted correctly, 48 pieces in this 72-piece set, I think, something like that, that have reducers. Wow. So basically it's the whole <laughs> set. Um, yeah, so seriously, like you're going to want your Indom with your death stroke with 11 attack and I mean he's got 6 range with the running shot 10 speed he can peg people for massive damage he's such a damage output for uh, this set and he can cut through the vast majority of the set like that's so good not to mention his trait says when he KOs one or more characters with an attack it does not specifically say it has to be closer range after resolutions heal death stroke up two clicks any any piece that has self-healing like as a passive ability like that rather than a regen. If you get free regen off a of figure, that's great. But I'm talking like this just you get healed for killing stuff. It's almost like a win more condition. This is awesome. So if you pull this death stroke, play this death stroke, and there's no real good way to avoid this death stroke in this set, I don't think. So pretty excited about that particular piece. You want to move on to the uncommon? Yeah, absolutely. Uncommon is going to be 023 uh, 023A. Steel! This is Henry Haywood the third. He has the Justice League team ability. He's 90 points. Justice League and robots, keywords. Uh, he also, just like his grandpa or whatever he is, great-grandpa, who knows, has 10 speed. Well, not just like, but he still has charge, dot, dot. So he's got 10 speed, 10 attack, 18 defense with a special defense power, and then 4 damage. So for 90 points, he's hitting a little harder, and he lives a little longer. He has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. He's got 8 clicks of life, which is awesome. He still has that same Haywood legacy trait, which is when he's hit with a close attack, you deal them the attacker 1 penetrating damage. And he has his special defense power for his first 3 clicks of life, which is so awesome, I love it. It's impervious free until your next turn. Steel can use invulnerability instead of impervious, and he has... Adjacent friendly characters modify defense value by plus one. So, if you want to put, like, I know it says behind me people, but if you want to put people in front of him and then give them plus one defense, because it makes him weaker. So, if you want to put people in front of him, give him plus one, de give them plus one defense. That way they kind of could be meat shields. I know it goes against the whole behind me, blah, 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 protecting people and all that, <laughs> all that jazz. But, like, for a better gameplay move, that's what you would do. Uh, after he loses charge, his first two clicks, he goes into some sidestep. All right, and then he has Close Combat Expert the rest of his dial after his first two clicks. So you can sidestep Close Combat Expert and 11 for 5 on his third click, which is pretty dope. Same thing on his fourth click. Uh, sadly, he goes into a bunch of Leap Climb later in the dial, but hopefully by then you're already based up. But he has Close Combat Expert the rest of his dial when he gets 9s and 2s and stuff like that. So it's really really solid figure, I think. You know, two things about this figure. One... Having a figure that does a minimum of four damage the entire dial has always been a good thing. <laughs> yeah. And two, I have never once had an ability that said adjacent friendly characters modify defense plus one. 
and it not be a good thing. I have actually won uh, battle royales at Origins because of that ability, but it was I can't remember which set it was, but it was super stupid because it, I think it was Kryptonian. It was like if there's a Kryptonian character and it boosted my Superman up to like 19 or 20 Ooh, or nice. something like that, and it was like. I actually showed because people would roll and they missed by one, and I was like, "No way, this actually works." <laughs> <laughs> like, so no way. that is so good when that happens. So that that's a good choice. Now, a minute ago I said there were characters in the set I didn't even know were a thing. So let's talk about one of those and why it's good. Number twenty-seven, Colonel Poison. Keywords: God Watch, Scientist, Soldier. The reason why I'm mentioning the keywords, although Calder is, was, is normally right when he said the keywords don't matter in Sealed, these might. Okay, so pay attention to that. God Watch, Scientist, Soldier. Soldier is very prevalent in this set. Uh, he has four clicks long. Uh, he starts off with Stealth and Combat Reflexes, which has always been a good combo. He has Leadership, which is fantastic. As uh, with the, the keywords. There's, I think, 16 key, uh, other pieces in the set. Oh, okay, nice. <clears throat> I think, uh, that have one of those three keywords that you could use this. He's only 40 points, so you're going to need those other those keyworded pieces. Um, here's, why, here's why it matters, really why it matters. Uh, he has a special attack power. It says, relax. It hurts more if you try to resist it. Poison. All caps, poison. Protected, I'm sorry, all caps protected, poison. When Colonel Poison uses poison, damage dealt is penetrating, and all damage, characters damaged this way can use Battle Fury until your next turn. There is not a lot of shape change in this set. There's not a lot of mastermind in this set. So giving your opponent Battle Fury is probably going to be a good thing, because then they won't be able to make ranged combat attacks in case they do break away from you. Also, like I said previously, I think there's like 48 characters in the set that have at least toughness as a reducer. You got penetrating poison, so this is good. Um, he also has a uh, double slash that says free. Choose an adjacent friendly character. That character can use Battle Fury until your next turn, so just in case they have shape change, or just in case they have Mastermind, you're good to go. This is a really good piece, and I think for only 40 points, I, you know, you probably want to throw this on there. Maybe you don't need leadership. Maybe you didn't pull the, the other pieces that you need for the leadership. Push him on to click number two. He drops one defense, still has stealth, still has combat reflexes. He switches from leadership to perplex. Super good. So... You have a couple options there. He doesn't have Indom or anything, but you're not probably going to be attacking with him or whatever. But, I mean, you carry him in, park him, you know, do some placement shenanigans, park him in some hindering terrain right next to an opponent's character, lock him down. He can't be hit because of the combat reflexes. He can't be hit because of the stealth. There's not a lot of pieces in this set with ignores hindering terrain for line of fire purposes. Um, I think he's good. I think he's really good. So... Just be uh, cognizant of that. Free poison damage out through damage reducers, always a good thing. All right, awesome. So I'm going to go into the rares, all right, and we're going to do Superwoman. This is like the rare I wish I would have pulled. Like, honestly, this is a really sweet rare to pull in sealed. Uh, good old Lana Lang here. It's all team ability. Metropolis reporter scientist, 125 points, six range, one bolt. Only special combat symbol is flight. But once we dig into the dial, you'll understand why. Go over the basics of the dial. It, she has some running shot with penetrating psychic blast. She is impervious top dial, instantly goes to invulnerability, then gets some toughness later on. Uh, sadly, when she loses running shot, she picks up force blast, and then she kind of goes into pulse wave. So she's just kind of a, a static, sitting around, pulse waving later in the dial. But her running shot um, starts with like a 10 attack, right? 10 attack and then 10 speed. And then she goes through an 11 attack on her middle two clicks of the sweet running shot, penetrating psychic blast combo. She starts with four damage. But first, let's go into her two traits and special damage power that she has for her entire dial, all right? I can absorb energy, steal energy, but with range combat attacks instead of close attacks. This is awesome, all right? You're down here in her dumb little force blast clicks. Boom, shoot someone, heal up. Now nah, I'm running shotting. Let's go. And, of course, if you want to, this also gives her pseudo indom. Since she doesn't have it, she can always heal up, which is nice. So if you want to push her, you know, you don't have to feel bad about it. 
her second trait is get behind me. Yeah, another get behind me. Another, another one of these guys. Uh, Superwoman and adjacent friendly characters have protected energy explosion and pulse wave. So that's sick. I don't know how much pulse wave is in this set. Probably like maybe two characters. There's like that canary chick and then someone else. I don't know. But her protected pulse wave is awesome. Like giving everyone on your team who's adjacent to her protected pulse wave. She can carry someone up. They're both protected pulse wave. Pretty awesome. And maybe they are squishier than she is. You know, she only has impervious, but maybe they only have, like, say it's a kernel poison and they can see through or whatever. Like, an energy explosion will hurt that person a lot more than it will hurt her. So, energy explosion protected is always uh, awesome. And then her special damage power she has for her entire dial is manipulate all forms of energy. When Superwoman is damaged by a ranged attack, give her a number of energy tokens equal to damage taken. All right, so you take three damage, give her three energy tokens. Three, remove X energy tokens. Heal her, X minus one, clicks, or modify damage value plus X when making a ranged combat attack this turn, or a ranged attack this turn. That is so dope. You have no idea. All right, she takes three damage. One, two, three. She's down here on her dumb little force blast click. You're like, all right, we're going to pump it up. You can you can either heal her up to get her back to a more, you know, nine attack, or sorry, 11 attack, good running shot, finish your second blast, right? Get her back to her movement attack, and then she can shoot again, heal up, you know, top dial. Or, right, you can sh blast someone for six penetrating damage. Like, this is dope. I, I, I think this is, a, like, an awesome figure. I didn't even realize it existed until I started going through the set today. And I'm like, where the hell is this rare? I pulled Bumblebee and, like, Lady Victor. Like, where was this in my booster? This, this chick is awesome. Oh. Okay. Interestingly, she has the scientist keyword, so if you match her up with Colonel Poison, you can pull the action tokens off of her, keep him right next to her because yeah. with the leadership, when, when she gets knocked down onto the pulse wave clicks that she has on click five and six, oh, guess what? She gives adjacent friendly characters protected pulse wave. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Hey, what happens when you have steel energy and you pulse wave and you hit, like, four opponents at the same time, Calder? Oh, you're, you're going to heal for every person hit, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I like this little combo. Dude, yeah, this is great. All right, you're welcome. You're welcome, guys. This is brought to you part by Dial H for Hero Clicks, once again. Yeah, Thanks. that could be a thing. You know, honestly, this is much more likely to happen because you're talking about a rare and an uncommon. Yeah, that's here. true. So, yeah. if you, it, I mean, this could happen. And look out for it if it does, because that's a really bad little combo to go up against, I'm guessing. All right, you got anything else on Superwoman? I'm going to move on. Nope, that's it. 48, Batman. This is the uh, Justice League of China Batman, not the weird ignores line of fire crap Batman. Whatever. Okay, so here's why I like this Batman. He has two traits. The first one says Ministry of Self-Reliance. I don't care about that one. I'm stupid because of just the <laughs> China keyword only being like ah. on like four carries. Here's the other one. Rocket Arms of Robin Bot. Gives him flight, what? toughness, modifies range by plus two. Gives him flight. I counted it up. There's like, I think, 20 characters in the set with flight. There is n there's like two or three characters with telekinesis or something like that. There's not a lot of... Uh, help support for placement in this in this set. So you get this character that has flight. All right, this is one of the few. That's not really why I picked him, but that was just like an additional little thing. It did, second part of the trait: power. Make a range attack modifying attack and damage by plus two. After resolutions, you can't use this trait for the rest of the game. So you really probably shouldn't just like I, I don't know. I guess it's really situational. You might be able to do it. But if you add plus two to his attack and damage top dial, you're looking at a 13-5, okay? This might be a very, very good alpha strike piece, but it is a power action to do it, so you can't use it with his running shot. He also has leadership, outwit, and perplex. 18 defense with energy shield deflection. I think stats-wise, this character is actually really good and has the ability to, because of like the out in the perplex, he's got some longevity. Um, I don't, I don't like him, kind of like past the first two clicks. But if you can just like keep the range, because he got five range with the running shot, that's not like super great. But you can perplex it up. 
Um, also, it says when Batman uses leadership and succeeds, choose an adjacent character that shares a keyword or is lower or is lower points. Okay, that's really great because the vast majority of characters in the set are below the 100 point line. Um, that character can use Perplex until your next turn. So, carry characters around with your fight. Roll for the leadership. If you get it, you get they get perplex. You perplex up Batman's defense. It would be twenty one versus range, mm. or it or it you know you could boost up his range or you could boost up his speed. Whatever you need in order. Plus he has perplex on his own, so you could theoretically get two perplexes off of this one character, and just carrying around a character. Also leadership, you could be taking action uh, tokens off of the person that you're carrying around. It's a weird like. He's it's a synergetic figure with whoever is going to be right next to him. Oh so right. I, I I think that it's actually going to be a little bit more than what you think. You're like, oh well, th I mean, there's other characters. But if you pull this, don't despair. I think he's actually a lot better than than what you think. And if last minute you need to just do like a bunch of damage all at once, just trigger the rocket arms. Do five damage. Why not? Out with their whatever they have and do five damage straight through. I'm sure you're going to kill something. Yeah. I, I honestly never read this Batman. Uh, this is pretty sick. I honestly really like him. I, uh, I thought his little Pac-Man thing was something else, but it's good old Robin bot. Nice. <laughs> I mean, okay, so past, past the first two uh, clicks, he goes into a close combat expert, or I'm sorry, close combat oriented. He's got combat reflexes, and he, but he still maintains outwit. So he has, like, outwit for the first five clicks of his six click. Yeah, that's really nice. So there, there's not a lot of stuff in this set. Like, I don't know if there's anything in the set that can't be outwitted other than, like, a special um, trait that protects them from outwit or something. But there's, like, no quintessence, I don't, I don't oh. think. Like, there's, like, set. one or two people that has, that has quintessence, I think. Like, oh, I, I guess Starfire does. But, I mean, the, the outwit's going to be more usable than it's not, you know? Like, I, yeah. I don't think you'll be upset no, I agree. when you have outwit on this figure. Plus, it's 20 defense from range base. You can make it 21. I, I'm just saying, like, if, you, if you're playing this right, you can make sure your Batman sticks around. And then you right. just nickel and dime him to death. Heck yeah, man. Heck yeah. All right. What do we got <laughs> for a Batman. super rare? Sorry. I can't get over him. Like, he's actually just really good. I can't get past it. Oh, all right. So, you know I had to do it. Had to do it. Uh, talk about main man, Lex Luthor. This is um, Man of Steel, Lex Luthor, where Superman is dead, or thought dead, whatever. And Lex Luthor decides that... Metropolis still needs a Superman, and it's finally Lex Luthor's time to shine. And I'm just saying, Lex Luthor has always been right, and clearly he's a better Superman than Superman ever could be. So, anyways, let's just jump right into the dial. Which, uh, which storyline is this? This is... is th does this take place on Fables, Earth-X, oh, New Earth, funny, Earth-1, the Wild this, <laughs> this is... Right, this is like the main... Whatever the main continuity DC universe is, because honestly, I'm unsure about what that is at this point. Um, that's what it is. It's after the Justice League gods, you know, when Ga Lex Luthor's God of Apocalypse and all those guys. Superman okay. dies. Lex Luthor's back from Apocalypse, but he's, uh, he's spoiler still... Spoiler alert! Whatever! Superman I'm dies. Kidding. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Uh, so yeah, uh, Lexi, Sexy Lexi, he has Justice League team ability. He has six range, one bolt. He has 200 or 100 points. Play him at 200, guys. Just do it. Just trust me. Apocalypse, Justice League, Metropolis, Armor, and Scientist keywords. <gasps> one trait. Sorry, he has Flight and Indom, just so you know. And his first trait is, before we go to the dial, you thought I wouldn't prepare for that? Ridiculous. Protected outwit once per action. Action. For all characters with this trait, I assume he's going to be the only person with... You thought I wouldn't prepare for that? Ridiculous. Unless, of course, you play multiple of him. <laughs> when an opposing character would target another friendly character without wit, both players roll a d6. If your result is higher, that friendly character has protected outwit until the end of your next turn. Nice! Yeah, that's right, buddy. You don't get to target nothing. Why not with uh, that's that's pretty good. The best part though is when you just run it. His trait name all together is one string of words. Like you thought, I wouldn't prepare for that ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm. And now his dial. He has a special defense power, special damage power. So top dial, he has an 11 speed with hypersonic. He's 11 attack with nothing. A little bummed. He doesn't even have at least like precision strike or something. But uh, 11 attack with bare, bare bones. 18 defense. With a special defense power, four damage with a special damage power. He has a special defense power for the first 
six clicks of his life. This eight click long dial. Special damage power for the first four clicks. His defense power reads impervious, period. Lex Luthor takes a maximum of one damage from the first attack that hits him each turn. That's dumb. Oh, it's so <laughs> dope, man. All right, so, like, if you're even trying to, like, you've got to really focus on Lex, even if it's penetrating, he takes one, just one. All right, guys? So that's really sick. So the first attack will instantly put him on his charge, super strength clicks. Second attack will put him wherever, but he, he will always only take one damage from the first attack. And, of course, if you hit impervious, then boo-hoo, go cry. So it's awesome. It's awesome. I love it. So that hits him each turn. So that's really sick. For his, six clicks of his life, I know, though? so long. <laughs> So he never goes below 17 defense ever. He has two 18s with the special damage power, or defense power. It's dope. His damage, show them how super a man can be. Leadership, outwit. When Lex Luthor uses leadership and succeeds, he can use when, oh, sorry, this turn, when he uses outwit, you may choose two powers instead. You target somebody, you're like, boom, you can't use running shot or penetrating second blast. So he can just outwit two powers. Pretty dope. Pretty dope. It doesn't say you can target two people. It says you can choose two powers. I assume you have to target the same person. I don't know. So leadership outwit, always awesome. So, like I said, he went into charge super strength, still with an 11 attack on his second two clicks. On his next three clicks, all right, he goes into a running shot, penetrating psychic blast. After he loses his damage power, he gets perplexed for two clicks. Then on his last two clicks, he gets, this is a huge bummer that they teamed up, uh, <laughs> Uh, super strength with hypersonic like they do all too many times, even though they don't work together anymore, sadly. So he has hypersonic speed, super strength with uh, toughness and outwit. So when he finally loses his impervious, he just gets some toughness uh, down dial. This looks Luther's awesome. He's a beast. I think he's like a total tank. So with a couple of perplexes on your, your team, I mean, he's he's a almost a really good like one man army. Like I would say, if you pull him, you should play him in seal, just like bam, because I think he's really good. Hey, guess who Colonel Poison's leadership works on, Lex Luthor? Here we go! <laughs> guess who else it works on, Mr. Oz? <laughs> guess who else it works on, uh, Death Speed Force Deathstroke? There's too many scientists in this set. There's too many. I, I just say, like, all the Deathstrokes have soldiers, so it's going to Oh, right, soldier, on... yeah. <laughs> well, soldier and scientist, so it's like, oh, man. I'm so, I swear to God, he's like a sleeper agent, you know? So like good. You don't think so he'll be good. as good as he is, but he's actually pretty good. But legit, that Lex Luthor is dumb. He's like one of the most powerful figures in this set. Oh, yeah. For sure. That's not a joke. Okay, we'll, we'll do a less, less powerful, but kind of a fun little thing that you can do with 050 Robin, which is Damian Wayne on top of the Goliath Robin. 125 points. Two, four, six, seven clicks of life, I think. Um, <clears throat> he's got a trait, one trait that says uh, Super Sons. Robin can use the team abilities of friendly characters within four squares unless they are uncopyable. Eh, I guess that's kind of cool. There is a figure in this, at least one, with Hyper Time as a t Oh, that's uncopyable, isn't it? Never mind. Anyway, it's like wah, wah, like, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, Titans Reborn as a trait, wah, wah, like that's okay. Here's where it gets kind of cool. He's one of the figures with flight in this set. Because of his uh, special defense power, he has giant size, but he also has Indom. So you can carry people with him because of the fight, but because he's Indom, it's only going to minus. What's a minus? Is it one? I forgot how this game works. Which, well, what, speed? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, so let's. All right, there's that. Anyway, he's got this cool thing called charge. <laughs> when Robin uses it, you may choose not to have a speed. If you do, he must move in a direct path, which wouldn't sound as good as what it actually is, except for remember he's giant size, so he's got a little bit more of a reach there. That's a bit more of like a take him down a notch. Uh, Ten speed, so, I mean, that's pretty good, actually. Uh, with the additional, in addition to the giant size, he's got invulnerability and dun, 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 adjacent friendly characters modify defense by plus one. So, like I said, that's really, really good. Um, he's going to be a target because he's giant size and everyone always targets right. giant size in like every game I've ever played. But he has 11 attack naked with printed four damage and outwit. So I'm okay with this. I think he's like kind of a beat stick for what he is. He has that special defensive power on the first four clicks of his life. 
Um, he transitions into a charge, like regular charge, and then blades the rest of his dial. And he goes from outwit to leadership to perplex. On the last click of his dial, because I guess they thought it was funny, he's got sidestep 12 attack with blades and 18 defense with toughness. Because why not? And that's where he's <laughs> just Robin, right? Like, he's not big at He's like, this is just Damien. Oh, it's dumb. I what like it, though. Okay, so so cool thing is, though, he's got flight, so he ignores hindering train, right, for movement purposes. Yeah. He's Robin, so he has the Batman ally team ability, so he's got stealth as well. So, you know, y- you can you can finagle your way up there in stealth and then charge ten squares and then hit an additional two away. So it's you got, like, basically an 11-square charge there. Um, I like it. I think it's pretty good. Uh, I don't think it's as good as Lex Luthor, but you stole Lex Luthor from me as a Oh, I stole, I stole I Lex had, Luthor from I you. Had, really? I had to pick something. Uh, <laughs> and unfortunately, he only has the martial artist, assassin, animal, and teen titans, League of Assassins, and Batman family keywords, and not scientist or soldier. Clearly the or, best keywords. This Robin. For, <laughs> for Colonel Poison. For Colonel Poison purposes. Uh, you can't really do much with Colonel Poison. If you him. don't pull Colonel Poison and sealed, you should just not play. You should just... Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I gotta leave. <laughs> He's 40 points of amazingness, okay? Oh. If you pull him, play him, find some way to make him work. He's too good not to use. Uh, and you can carry him in with this... Robin. I'm there just it saying, is. Because he has flight. I'm just saying. <laughs> and you give him plus one defense because adjacent friendly characters oh modify my defense. But it's, oh, my God. There's so much. That's 20 defense up close, you guys. That, that is 20 defense up close. Um, okay. That's, uh, we're not going to go into chases. We never no. do go into chases because just the chance of you probably pulling them is not very likely. I mean, everyone already looked at all of them anyway because that's yeah. what everyone really cares about and pays attention to as soon as the set comes out. So hopefully these are kind of the, like, pieces that no one was talking about or you didn't know because I sure as hell didn't know that Colonel Poison was as amazing as he is. No, 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 uh, no. Until today. <laughs> uh, but in the future, uh, if it, it does help, especially if you are going to a sealed event. Read through uh, the set and then look at those things that we – Calder and I looked at today uh, of like what the leadership is going to work on in the set and uh, keyword weird things and and stuff like that because it might end up being a lot better than what you think it's going to be initially and it might help you out in a future sealed uh, for whatever that set may be. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> what, what is your overall feeling on this set? Do you like it? Um, I mean, I'm not gonna buy any of it outside of events and stuff. It's not a a brick. Set, definitely not a case set for me. Um, it honestly, it feels like an older set. So it has no new things. So it doesn't have any equipment. It doesn't have any whatever. It also doesn't have a title character, which is really weird. That is weird. I didn't even notice that until right now. We still don't have a Batman, Superman, or Wonder Woman title character, which are like the DC title characters, right? Like it's, it feels like. Somebody else on the WizKids team who wasn't aware of new anything made a set. And so it feels like a set from, like, 2015, honestly. So I'm going to play this a little bit differently on the positive side. I think this feels like an older set, but in a nostalgic way. Like, it's good. I like the set. There's weird synergy inside the set that just I don't think – I don't think WizKids plans this far ahead. I think they luck into some of the synergy oh, that ends up occurring inside of their own set. So it's not like I could really like, oh, you guys did a good job there. I don't think they did it on purpose. But it's cool the way it ended up. I'm glad that they did some weird things with uh, Justice League of China. You'll probably never get them again. That's interesting. I'm really glad they did a lot of stuff with the Teen Titans. The weird thing I thought, I just, I was like, why was Defiance? Why Defiance? I don't know. Um, but to go back to, you, like, you saying it's a nostalgic set, I, I think every DC set is a nostalgic set because it's so long between DC sets. <laughs> that and, like, if you are of the mind that you're nostalgic for Batman or you're just nostalgic for Superman, every DC set has Batman and Superman. Exactly, in it, so yeah. I guess it would be. Uh, except for, what was it, Superman and Wonder Woman? Or no, Legion of Superheroes. Superman and Legion of Superman. Didn't have Batman. anyone. <laughs> no Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman here. No, no, sir. 
Mm, okay. Even though his right. name is in the set, would it, wouldn't it be great if we got no Black Panthers in this Black Panther in the Illuminati set? I'd love. Uh, I'd be hilarious. Rioting in the streets. <laughs> uh, Don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby? Sorry. I love Black Panther. Like, I legit love Black Panther. I've been reading um, the newest title, Captain America, for Marvel comics. Oh yeah. And, uh, and Black Panther just like sporadically shows up in like the first like four episodes or four issues or something like that, and I'm like, man, he's so cool in this. Man, are we reading the same Captain America book? <laughs> are we? I must not be, because I don't remember Black Panther. Is is he in jail right now for you? <laughs> no. Okay, we're not reading the same Captain America book. <laughs> no. No idea what I'm reading. Okay. Cool. Uh, no, he just shows up with, uh, like, Captain America has those, what are those, like, little ball things that he had in the movie, and they were around his wrist, and then he could, like, touch him. Oh, and Black Panther's, like, that. like wrist, yeah, yeah. yeah, his Apple Watch. And then, his Apple Watch, his Black Panther Apple Watch. Um, he gave some of those to Captain America, so, like, oh, Captain nice. America's, yeah, and it was, it was kind of cool, I liked it. Plus, the suit's just sweet. Yeah. Is there ever a Black Panther suit that's not awesome? I argue I don't that. know, Maybe. I say no, Probably and not. if you say yes, I'm. I just it's an all black suit with cat ears. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right, that's enough of that. Oh, uh, <laughs> let's let's move on. We've got other things. Derail in this podcast. That's okay. Uh, Dial H works off the value for value model, and our our goal is to entertain you guys and gals. And if you feel like we entertain you and give you value in your life, consider showing us your love and uh, leveling up your heroic rank. On the Patreons, you can get your heroic title like Citizen Vigilante Protagonist, the esteemed. Super fan status. We have uh, quite a few super fans now. I ch- I'm really genuinely excited about. Which leads me to my next thing, which is, if you didn't see it on Facebook or Twitter, we ordered custom dice. I don't know when they're going to come in, but the order is already in. It's been paid for. They're getting made right now. As soon as they get to me, I'm going to start shipping them out to everyone that has their heroic title. So if you want her your heroic title, you can get that heroic title on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, but we will ship you custom made Dial H for Hero Clicks dice. They're sweet, they're black, they got our logo on the ones spot, which I don't like, but that I don't know if there was an option to switch it to any other side. So if you roll double ones, at least you get to see two Dial H emblems. That's all I'm saying. Really, is it is it a lose? I think it's a win. I feel like it's a win. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it is. Trust me. So if you want that, if you want that in your life, I'm going to pretty much exclusively be rolling those at Origins. Oh, probably so, me too. Um, and as soon as I actually get them in, I'm going to, like, because – I'm a loser. I'm going to, like, stack them all up and make, like, a pyramid of dice and just take a picture. It's going to be sweet. So if you haven't seen them, check them out on Twitter or Facebook uh, so you can just see what they look like at least. Uh, but if you want a set, uh, yeah, you know how to do it. Let's jump into the community section. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Every Tuesday on Facebook and on Twitter, we put a Community Tuesdays question up for you guys to jump on and answer. This week's Community Tuesdays question was, which group of here clicks powers... Color is your favorite color, any color you don't like. Um, I already answered that last week, uh, or we, we this was actually inspired very much by Malcolm Rush. Thank you, by the way, uh, Malcolm Rush. Sometimes we get lazy and we can't think of our own questions, so we just kind of like yoink them no, from, from Malcolm Rush. So, like, he does good, he, he does good work. That's what I'm saying. I want to I give him that. Um, so my favorite is probably probably black. What is your favorite color set? Uh, so my favorite is gray. It's very middle of the road, um, but I like it a lot. So, like, leadership. Um, I like just almost every team. I want to put leadership on. Invulnerability is a very middle of the road. Not terrible. Not the best, but a good, solid defense power. I'd rather see invulnerable and toughness on any person, you know. Um, and then TK, obviously, telekinesis is an awesome power. And then running shot, one of the best speed powers uh, there is. So, yeah, Gray. Gray's my guy. And also, you can find, like, three of those powers on almost every Captain America ever. Running shot, in and leadership. So, also that. Also that. Yeah. I'm going to start off on Twitter this week. We have an answer from Clicks Roadshow said, oh, by the way, I wanted to say this. Did you know that there is, like, 
a not a real consensus in what the colors are according to Heroclix players. Okay, I guess not. What color do you think this color? I assume this is the color you're thinking of. Is the same one I'm thinking of. <laughs> Brown. Okay, so I <laughs> I think it's bronze. Because it's okay. shiny. Kind some of. people think it's brown. Some people think it's bronze. Some people think it's copper. Some people say it was gold. No, it's definitely not gold. No I, offense. And some people say gold, too. And then that was not the only one. Some people don't call it gray. They call it silver. Um, what? And then, okay. Yeah, I, it's weird. So um, I didn't know that until this week. I just thought it was a fun little thing. Like, oh, that's weird. You guys call it copper. Okay. Uh, well, anyway, Clicks Roadshow said brown copper is my choice, and it is also the one that I forget to use most often. Oh. Uh, okay. All right. Fair enough. That sucks. But yes, yeah. perplexed poison. I never use them. Uh, Brian Bowling said my armor is not pink. It's like a, a a lightish red. It's a quote from Red versus Blue. I don't know how to do his voice, so I'm not gonna try. So lightish red for life. Okay. Rex Jungle Cat said I'm not seeing much love for Black Powers. So I'll step in and say I love it when I have to remind my opponents that they can't target me because I'm using stealth, or they can't use a power because it is outwitting. Nice. Justin Quinn Honeycutt said, I love gold. gold. I saw that, actually. Thank you. <laughs> I actually laughed out loud. When I saw that. <laughs> That's awesome. So thank you. Dilate super fan. Uh, let's see. Little Plastic Superheroes. The Ruffian. Has to be brown powers. Great for attacking and defending. Agreed. Jeff Poyer said, uh, Citizen Jeff Poyer said, I assign each individual power a ranking from one to five based on how useful it was. I personally find the power then totaled for each color. Brown was the clear winner with 18 points. Poison is only a three for me, but all the others were fives, which I totally agree with. And uh, he said he guessed purple was going to be his least favorite. Uh, it actually scored 12 points, mainly because of willpower. Uh, and orange and yellow tied for last with 10 points each. So, like, Pulse Wave is awesome, but defend, support, phasing, like, they rarely get used outside of special versions of those powers. Uh, purple, again, sad that, that it's his least favorite, because willpower is a five, but, you know, everything else is kind of a one, you know? Like, it appears on the dial, and two, if it's on the dial, there isn't a damage reducer normally with willpower. So, like, it's great traded, but if it's just willpower, you're kind of like, ah. I prefer Indom with, like, Invol or something, you know? So, yeah. So, when they started, I don't know if everybody knows this. Did you know that Willpower was not originally, like, one of the colors? Like, purple was not originally one of the colors? I did not know that. Okay, so, uh, brown, purple, dark blue, they were not originally in the game of Hero Clicks. When purple came out, which was, like, I don't know, like, a couple years or maybe not even that long, into the game... They, they released these little, uh, like, additional rule packs that were coming with, like, starter sets and stuff or whatever. And it was like, by the way, there's four more powers. Here you go. And they did that, like, numerous times. Anyway, when Willpower came out, I was like, this is such an interesting power. It sucks because I can't have super senses or invulnerability in its place, but at least it's cool. So That's true, yeah. Yeah. Even since then, I was like, that's that's really weird. Matthew Ventura said, favorite and best is gray. Brown and pink are very strong seconds, but gray just has it all. Running shot for offense and vulnerability for defense. Telekinesis for both. And leadership allows you to do more with your turn than your opponent. Plus, can remove action tokens. What can I say, great minds? Uh, think alike. <coughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> just saying. Uh, Superfan Eric Caves. Overall, the best is probably brown. The worst among them is poison, which is probably true for Brown, uh, which is still very useful for navigating your way in dark caverns. But I'm, I don't get the reference, but poison helps you in dark caverns. Someone, prob someone probably does. I don't. Uh, <laughs> that's honest. Uh, personally, though, I find myself using black the most. I'm big on stealth and outwit in general, always on my teams, and I always appreciate the ability to heal oneself. The worst color is probably orange, which is funny because his name is... Arag Ar Aragonist, which is kind of like orange, but sort of not. Never mind, I don't know where I was going with that. Anyways, <coughs> 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 you should never underestimate the ability to punch someone on a different elevation than yourself with leap and climb. It always catches people by surprise, and will probably do so especially well with this new 85-point Batman. That first was a bit lamp joke for those with question marks dancing above their heads, unfortunately. <laughs> and then he linked to a YouTube video, which is I Don't Explain Jokes, uh, the Joker, which is pretty funny. So he actually, uh, last 
week, last episode with Jedi Legend and I, he, he came to the same conclusion that we did. It's like uh, black and brown are the best and, and orange sucks. Just saying. I got words for that episode, but we'll, we'll do it after community. <laughs> it's Alexander Trevora. He said he likes gold and he doesn't like silver. How, how not dare like... you? Yeah, how dare you? David Herbert right. said brown, hypersonic speed, poison, impervious, and perplex. Would take that on a dial all day. Ray W. said, he's the only person in the history of this game that believes this, by the way. I'm just throwing this out there now. Yep. In cap blue is always fun in any ability slot. Okay, what? sure. What? <laughs> so, I just can't wait to use my defend on you. Or, I mean, I'm a barrier. barrier. I just can't wait to use my, I'm a barrier you in. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's cool. It doesn't win you games most of the time. Not normally, no. Jay Sly. See, that's another power. It's like, prob is awesome. Incap's like pretty good. My control is great with special. Like, it's just one of those one of those power sets. It's weird. Uh, Jay Sly said, "Gray, easily my favorite." What, a, what an amazing guy. He said, "I went British. Running shot, TK leadership, invulnerability. Admitted, doesn't make me Randy, but not bad. Double British." <laughs> Citizen Mr. Clicks Flick said Brown Cooper. And then he replay and then he fixed himself. It's like copper! Hypersonic speed poison per thank you for listing him out, sir. Uh, thank you. Appreciate that. But Steve I agree. <laughs> Steven McNeil, black or gold. I have four strong powers. Uh, each I enjoy. Dark blue has three mediocre powers and the amazing shape change. Matt uh, said, I think silver is my favorite. Running shot is a must-have. TK is vital. To so many teams, Invol is decent, and although it never works for me, I do love leadership. To which we got a response from, I think this is Citizen Kirby Ronnie, uh, said, Silver never even crossed my mind, but compared to Copper, what I felt was best. It is slightly behind Impervious and on par with Hypersonic Speed, but TK and leadership take you to a whole new level. Good call. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Peter Zachary. Ironically, I enjoy purple. Force Blast, add knockback to your attack. Smoke Cloud, as an excellent part of a free action. Willpower, as good when part of Indom, Quintessence, Power Cosmic. Close Combat Expert, probably the hardest argument for me, but it is a double perplex, however uh, you like, and it's usually mid to late dial when you're, uh, when you're in the thick of it. Okay. All right. Uh, we have an answer from Vigilante Collectible. Said pink, because I love sidestep, sidestep that much. I barely ever use anything yellow. Pulse Wave is my least favorite power. Yikes. Tristan Campos said, Red and yellow, just Hulk Hogan colors, are my faves. Dark blue and light green are my least faves. Man. Really red? I mean, red. Eh, red's okay. You know what I think I have a problem with red, though? Why? I can't roll super senses to save my life. That sounds... That's what it comes down to. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Hey, if you just have um, bad luck with super senses, or even against super senses... Yeah. All right, fair Loyal Miller said, I love me some red or brown copper. I mean, what is better than flurry blades and a rollout? Uh, well, yeah, no, that sucks if you're trying to flurry blade someone else and they're like, I rolled out of both of those. <laughs> oh, that would suck. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, green, uh, that is by its... Uh, that is by itself, super strength is just not fun, but not as bad as earthbound neutralize. Can we like? Can we kind of agree, maybe possibly, that that super strength is like maybe the second least useful power of all time? Yeah, because well, you can only pair it with charge nowadays, and it's it's just it's not seeing nearly as much. I mean, when it was with hypersonic, it, it was dope, but now it got nerfed real bad. Yeah, it, it got nerfed, and then top of that. How many times – now, there's some figures out there that have the ability to generate their own uh, object tokens, right? Yeah. You know, there's, there's some Hercules out there. I think there's like a She-Hulk or something. And those are good. Those are okay. But the vast majority of the time when you have super strength, what do you do with it? You pick up one object. You either hit or you miss. And if it's an alpha strike and you hit, all right, cool, you probably won the game. But if you didn't – the power isn't used like the rest of the game. It's, dude, it's gone. And late dial super strength, it's like, I don't... Like, where am I supposed to put my objects? I'm not, like, a freaking psychic. How am I supposed to know that... Oh my, I know my character has super strength on click five. Where should I put them? Like, how, how the hell am I supposed to know where to put these things? Come on. You know what I think they should do? What, what I think would be interesting? If they made it an inherent ability within super strength, 
They gave them, like, improved movement, ignores blocking terrain, and breaks through it as they move. Wouldn't that just or make like it better? Free at, or, like, making the um, power actions and whatever, the attacks to destroy walls, you know, like, blocking stuff, make that a free action instead. Boom, punch a wall, free action, super strength. And then That'd be also sick. remove, if they have super strength, remove the qualification that they have to do three base damage. Like that's yeah, crazy, yeah, or that. You have super strength. You have super strength. Even if you have two printed damage, you should be able to break a wall, you know. It's dumb. We could go on, but. We could whatever. go on. <laughs> Damn, Powell said light blue followed closely by pink. Really? Another light blue? I know, that's what I thought. All right. I mean, my control's legit now. It used to suck. It is. Uh, whatever. Vigilante Ben Jones, our man from Australia, said, Pink power for me. Sidestep, precision strike, invincible, and empowered. I like to get up close and personal when I battle, so these all work for me. Pink characters unite. And then linked uh, a couple pictures. One of Blink and one of Nimrod. You're a Nimrod. Nice! Oh, total no. burn! Uh, J.R. Smith. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> I like powers in each color group. I have no clear favorite or worst. That's not how the game is played. Try again, bud. I wasn't trying to alienate you. I'm just... <laughs> Sorry. Wait. All right. So, all right. You know this guy. You heard his name. Yeah. It's uh, it's uh, protagonist porcupine spaceship grenade. Oh, yeah. All right. Just that name alone should tell you what kind of humor this guy has. He has said, big fan, b- big, <laughs> big fan of the white powers. Because sometimes they let you do things that aren't just standard abilities. And I'm not a big fan of the red-orange powers because they all make me think of how much I wish Leap and Climb was better than it is. Each one. Each one. Ah, oh, energy explosion. Man, I wish Leap Climb was better, though. Oh. <laughs> oh, thank God I have toughness that Colonel Poison went right through. But, man, I wish Leap Climb was better. Just getting those Leap Climb flashbacks. Ah, uh, Rebecca Tim Romo. Black Powers. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the right answer. Except for regen, which I think. Many say but... purple powers because I I rarely use them. Or for the battle. There are purple powers in this. What are purple powers? Seriously, smoke cloud can be good, like really good. I'm just gonna let that one sit, so I'm not I'm not gonna right. reply to that. Chris Kurtz, this is the last answer I have on the twitters. By the Perfect. way, he said red seems really good, but then again, who doesn't like the white powers? I mean, duh. I mean, that's gonna be better. So like. Than it. You have to say, white is just middle of the road, right? Because sometimes it straight up gives you two more powers. Sometimes, like, just straight up, oh, it's leadership and outwit? Well, obviously, that's awesome. But some are just terrible. Some white powers are really bad. Like, that's just... Okay, in in lantern mythology, aren't, like, the white lanterns all of the colors put together? Wouldn't that be brown in reality, though? Just say. No, they'd be black. No, it'd be brown. I think colors mixed together is brown. Uh, uh, whatever. (laughs) So anyway, uh, basically, most white powers in this game are just this weird hodgepodge of the standard powers anyway, so it's kind of, it really does make sense that they're kind of like the white lanterns of the power sets. All right, I'm out on Twitter. What do you got? Last one. Very last one is Peyton Golston. Black. I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how to do this, Ron Burgundy. Black, 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 <laughs> black. I don't know how to do it. Sorry. Uh, wait. Does that mean we tied on number of answers? Because I, I started off. We did. You started. Uh, off. Where's my Twitter on First yet? time tying, guys. Good job. No, let's go with the episode last week. So I knew Jedi Legend was like British or like whatever accented person, and I listening to that episode, <laughs> I was so mad I wasn't in the studio. I was like, man. I miss something He so does. Good. He has one of the coolest accents oh, ever. So good. Such a good accent. And by the way, you guys completely missed uh, Kyle Rayner. I'm like, I don't care because I do not like Kyle Rayner. You talked about just Guy Gardner and John Stewart. You didn't even mention the new sculpt Kyle Rayner. I, I laughed really hard about that. I'm like, see, who cares? Who cares, Kyle? Who cares? Well, I mean, like, out of the Green Lanterns and the three that we got, and Kyle's the worst. My, I agree. My favorite Green Lantern is John Stewart, and your favorite Green Lantern is Guy Gardner. And I don't like—I don't, I don't like Kyle Rayner. He's, he's a nerd. That's why. He's a nerd. <laughs> Loser. Uh, I. I just like. I think it really comes down to the Justice League Unlimited cartoon and how freaking awesome John Stewart was, and I'm like, man, he's so he's so cool. 
I don't I, well, I don't know why I have such like a strong. This totally makes I'm sense sorry, of what I, I chose to do just, with my life. But like I have such a strong like liking for characters that are military minded. John Stewart's cool. So like like John Stewart is awesome, and then I also love like Captain Marvel and like Thaddeus Ross. Like Red Hulk is just like any of these like military characters. That's the wrong Captain to like. Just saying, but <laughs> we'll move on. Which captain? Well, captain Marvel? Captain America obviously is the best one, but you're like Captain Marvel. Yeah, he's okay. Oh, whatever. He's he's like he's like. Are you ever the gonna do anything captain. with that that motorcycle? And he's like, No, I just ride it around. Look, guys, I can do a wheelie. That's about Some it. That's all he ever does in the comic traffic today. I thought that was pretty cool. I thought he's gonna what? die. Nothing. Totally, <laughs> totally got off. You said a wheelie, and I'm like, Some dude had a crash rocket in traffic today, and he did a wheelie. I thought that was pretty sick. Anyways. <laughs> What a great podcast. What a great podcast. Uh, we don't have any birthdays this week that anybody let us know about, so no sexy happy Arabian birthdays. Um, we're recording a day earlier than we normally do, and when I let uh, Jedi Legend know that, I'm sure he was asleep with the time difference, How dare so he, he couldn't let us know what the Jedi Legend Hero Flicks tip of the week was, so that is my fault. Um, I, we, all right, we all right here we go. I got a tip of the week. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, wait. Do, should I play it? Yeah. No, it's not. No, your, it's, it's not. not I'm, not a, I'm not a Jedi. It belongs to Jedi. Legend. I'm not a legend. I'm not a legend. Uh, should we have Governor? Hello, welcome to Jedi Legend uh, TV of the Week. Hey, Croc, <coughs> tell you what. Um, is that offensive? I feel like that's offensive. It, I don't know, probably is. Uh, anyway, don't uh, don't forget. People don't know exactly what color what color brown is. Brown, copper, bronze. Um, yeah. So if you're just colorblind, kind of sucks, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Tip of the week, don't be colorblind. <laughs> That's a horrible tip. It was. It was really bad. And a friend. This, is, this goes to show that the only people capable of giving us good tips of the week is, in fact, Jedi Legend. That's true. All right. Well, hey, we do have a Malcolm Rush question block, so we can do that. Call her headache. Malcolm Rush, the man from Japan, says, don't die, slash hard to kill, slash keeps coming back to life. Or where the is this effing dial going to end? Please include all of the above when answering the question. So, best and worst, don't die, hero clicks. Uh, personal favorite, don't die. Um, I'm going to choose two that do relatively the same thing. So, Bizarro, from Superman, Legion Superhero set, great don't die figure. Even when he's nerfed, he's awesome. For whatever, only 150, whatever. So he's still great. Another character, Beyonder, you sadly have to pay 100 points and you only get four of those little life tokens. Not as good. Uh, my least favorite don't die is Mr. Immortal. He is 46 points and I, I love the Great Lakes Avengers, but he needs a new version. His dial is too long. Honestly, this is my problem with the don't die figure. He has six clicks of life, three clicks of regen on the end, and you can just ignore him the entire game. He has seven speed, nothing. Nine attack, nothing, the whole dial. Fifteen defense with cover reflexes, one damage with leadership. So, like, knock him to click three where he does nothing, and just don't care about him. And you can, like, you can one-shot him or whatever if you want to, and wait for him to come back, but he's scored whenever he's off the map. So, like, he's just so easy to ignore. He's he's not a good don't die. All right? Not a good don't die. But Bizarro, stuff like that, great don't you die. You know, his, his dial now, even though the last one that was made was during the Captain America set... Still pretty comic accurate as far as how useful he is, he, he is in the comics, which is not useful no, at all. No, not at all. And uh, it makes sense, yeah. And sometimes makes situations so much worse. Yay! <laughs> uh, number two, your favorite Don't Die Hero Clicks and or Don't Die Team. So my favorite Don't Die Team, uh, which is technically Don't Die, uh, is Lex Luthor when he has the subterfuge token. Because if you can't target him, how are you going to kill him? I mean, I'd say that's Don't Die, just saying. So that's one of my all-time favorite teams ever. I have one Ooh. figure that I want to talk about, and I feel like I want to talk about him before they eroded him, before he hit the watch list, and that's Bizarro, because how funny was that when you could put, like, 15 tokens on Bizarro? He was nuts. <laughs> that was awesome. I mean, he's still really good. Like, oh God, I was so dumb. Well, you can only put, like, six? I think well, it's six. It's half his... Stop, so he, he used to be able to be capped at 300, now he's capped at 150, is what it is. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, so it is six. It's still a lot, um, yeah, six. I mean, uh, that's still that's kind of like a don't die. Other than that, I can honestly say I have never played 
against um, what's that like Con Le that came out that everyone was using on Don't Die Teams? The, the one with the D twenty. That guy? Yes, is, so he's, that one. I don't know his name. I tried to find it before the podcast started, but he's the D20 guy. It's climb out the grave and I stuff. Will, I will look into it real quick because I can't remember, but what I was going to say was I've never played against him one time, so I can't say like if he's really like that good or anything or if he annoys me or anything. So, yeah, there, there's nice. that. Best and worst ways to run a don't-die team. Do some don'ts. Um... Don't have other things that can give up, like, points, right? Like, if you're running a don't-die team, don't have a ton of equipment that you can't, like, first turn get. Like, have a way to, to get points in your stuff. Like, it's cool to not die. And just, like, be like, all right, you can't kill me, so whatever. But, like, don't be using ID cards and, and stuff. <laughs> it's, it's cool to not die. I mean, yeah, it's, thanks, it's, yeah, you're welcome. What amazing, uh, amazing advice. Look at this guy. Truly ahead of his time. What a, what a philosopher, what a philosopher, this dude. Genius. No, but, like, don't be giving up just points. Just in, in, like, dumb ways. Like, if you're running Don't Die, don't have 100 points with the Colossals, too, that people can just KO. Like, there's no reason to have stuff like that, like, on your Don't Die team. So, like, just don't, don't have weird ways to give up points. That's all I can say. Keep your keep your distance unless you you have to. I don't know. Don't die teams are weird. I only ran one once a few times and not. They're they're actually kind of weird to run. They are hard. Um, stuff like I guess Unimine and Goblin King are also technically don't die teams. Stuff like those uh, make one attack or let your opponent use a whole bunch of ID cards and then don't make attacks and get yourself tokened up and just run away once you're ahead on points. It's a terrible way to play. I don't enjoy it at all. I hate running away. Something like that. That's why I don't play Goblin King and Unimind. But that's how you should probably use those teams effectively. So Resurrection Man is who we That's the guy. What a, gr- what, a, <laughs> what a name. Uh, yeah, it's in his name, guys. So it's pretty on the nose. <laughs> All right, what's the next question? Okay. Um, best and worst ways to beat Don't Die teams. or Pulse Wave. There it is. Or, or give you the best way to survive against Don't Die So surviving against one's pretty easy um, because they don't usually do that much damage. Fun fact. This is true. It's more like an attrition battle a lot of the really? time. So, I mean, if, it, if it's timed, then collect the few points that you can and then just kite them the whole match. You have because... to... You can be that focus. guy if you want to. Like, you really, yeah, you can. You really have to focus one figure. If your don't die team you're playing against has a like peace machine or like whatever, or let's say it has Ironheart, right? Ironheart, you can technically one shot if their dice are just terrible. So like flurry Ironheart twice or whatever, and you she should be dead. Like rolling her broken armor stuff and whatnot. So, like, choose a figure who's arguably the squishiest. Don't try to, like, go after Lockjaw and make six attacks and, like, whatever, trying to kill him, you know? Don't go after Haha ha Joker unless you totally have a way to at least get, like, 10 or 20 points off of him, like, stuff like that. Like, choose the character who's the easiest to kill on a don't... Like, it's hard, obviously, it's don't die team, but, like, go after a character and without investing points. So if you are going against the Unimind, I can't say this because even in my game, I instantly blew ID cards right away um, instead of just like KOing his object. But anyways, stay up okay, on points. Uh, th- this may be the only time that I ever actually advise this type of strategy because I don't like this type of strategy. I don't think it's like a fun way to play, but especially if you're in a tournament setting and someone brings a don't die team, they know what they're doing. They know why they brought that team. So the only way to like really counteract that to the win is to just be like a little pansy. <laughs> you get your like eight points from their object or whatever, and then just run. Yep. Kite the whole match. Run out that clock because you're trying to win, and that's probably going to be the only way you win, especially if you didn't bring Pulse Wave. Yeah. Or do what I do and uh, put all your eggs in one basket right away. Totally give them a whole bunch of points and really hope that you can pop you to mind and then kill one of those Eternals. Not a smart way to play it, but it's the way I chose to play it because that's how Captain America would do it. Punch your way that's through good. problems, kids. <laughs> can, 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 you, can you imagine how upset these don't die teams, like the people running them would be, if you if you run in and you're like, okay, well, I'm going to attack that object. Okay, I'm going to collect my six points. And then just run. John, the I'm out. Match. See you later. <laughs> and they're like, come back. And be like, no, like, I'm not going to do that. But I don't feel like it. <laughs> I got my six points, and I know what you're up to. You're not going to fool me. 
All right, uh, number five. Which hero clicks seems to fit, don't die, but it's really easy to KO them? On paper, this hero click should be hard to kill, but it's not. I don't even have an answer for that. So I kind of do. So Earth X Daredevil, right? In Sealed, it felt like he died every single game. Like, people were rolling sixes. One guy rolled a crit hit, and I was like, I hate life. You know, like, this Daredevil, if a six pops up, it pops up, and it really blows. But, uh, again, I played in one tournament against him, and I never rolled a single six when it mattered against this Daredevil. So Daredevil, it's just like you either you kill him almost like right away, or you don't kill him. So he seems to sort of fit Don't Die and sort of not fit Don't Die. He's really, really easy to hit, so the amount of attacks you can get off on him is a lot. And even if you don't totally KO him, it's just when you roll a six. So you don't even have to damage the guy. Just rolling a six against him is all it takes. So, yeah. So Daredevil is what I would say fits that and kind of does and doesn't fit it. I, I thought of one. So this isn't exactly a particular figure, but more of the mechanic associated to the resource. You think that the white power battery, which brings people back to life on their last click, would be better than what it is, but it only gives you regen on the next turn. So if your character has two action tokens, you can't even use the regen and then they just peg you for, like, one more damage, and then your character dies anyway. So the whole, like, it's like the emotional spectrum or something. It's been so long since I've played the White Power Battery. But you th I always thought it was going to be better than what it was, and then it never really panned out to be, like, the greatest thing ever. You have to very specifically choose which figures you're going to put the White Power Battery on for it to really do, you know, like, maximize your potential. But it just never really worked out for me. And you'd think that bringing any figure back from the dead, basically, and giving them region would be great. And then it doesn't really pan out. Bummer. <laughs> Sorry. Six, any future comic book characters you wish to fit into Don't Die Hero Clicks? Uh, yeah, Phoenix. I think they should do more with Phoenix, where she oh, yeah. just keeps coming back. I think that would be a really interesting figure that they really haven't maximized on that ability that she does i can probably think of another one but you go ahead well whenever they make an altered carbon set chris will be <laughs> waiting um dude that, that show is so good probably it's probably great i don't know um him um mr mortal i'd like to see a new mr mortal who's who's better in a way like i don't know I, i'd like a mr mortal where if he takes any damage he can just choose to like kill himself because he has his like this little pocket gun so he can just do that and then he can start somewhere else. i think it'd be funny I don't know. I'd like a... Oh, Wolverine. Oh, Wolverine. What, yeah. Why is there not like a good comeback to when we, the death Wolverine? When we talk like, about Don't Die, you'd think Wolverine should just be all up in this, but he's not. Weird. Yeah. It's because <laughs> we're not making him as good as he should be, probably. Oh, what's, a, what's a good DC character that would be like a good Don't Die? Oh, Lobo? yeah. That'd, probably, Lobo. that'd be a good one. We Okay. Uh, I'm just saying like honorable mentions. We did not mention the... Deadpool, who takes damage, and then you instantly roll a d6, and you heal half the result. Like, that's great don't die stuff right there. That's a great Deadpool. Yeah. Oh, Deathstroke. Deathstroke would also be a really good don't die character. Oh, nice. Also, I'm just going to throw this out there. I think it's the only time I'll ever say this. I think Deathstroke's way cooler than Deadpool. Just saying. I know some people out there are going to be like, nah, uh, shut up. He is. Also, Deadpool annoys me. And Deathstroke's awesome. That's, those are all those are valid, uh, valid opinions, Chris. <laughs> Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say I agree or disagree with you. It's disagree, but I'm not gonna say it. Well, I guess. I <laughs> I'm glad you're back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would like a don't die Iron Man in a way that he just keeps changing armor. So like you're not really damaging Tony, but like he just switches armors. So it's like, ah, oh, this armor's at full health. Die, you know, suck it. Like that'd be cool. I feel like you know, an Iron Man that right. can switch armors in mid fight and stuff would be really sick. Um. So yeah. Oh, Hulk. The Hulk oh, would Hulk? be really yeah. good. Uh, person. Not only that, but I think it's his most recent comic book run. is called The Immortal Hulk, and it's all about how he can't die. So, yeah, there you go. That was pretty easy. Every time someone says Hulk, I just think about Bruce Banner, like, face-planting into the Rainbow Bridge. It's so fun. <laughs> all right, you're on such a good – sorry. So, yeah, that's our Don't Die stuff. A uh, special shout-out to zombies. I totally forgot to mention all of those. They're all technically Don't Die because they can all get tokens and heal back to last click and heal up and stuff like that. So zombies are really good, really good Don't Die. So, yeah, thank you, Malcolm, for the questions. All right. Well, 
I don't have anything else to you, Calder. You know, I think that's it, guys. Okay, well then, as always, you can follow us on the Twitters at Dial H for HeroClicks. That is the number four on Facebook. Just search Dial H for HeroClicks. You can send us an email, which I have not checked in quite a while. Actually, I should probably do that. Terrible. At, uh, Terrible. Be <laughs> Dial H for HeroClicks at gmail.com. Is, is, are you okay? Are you gonna check the That's email? Right, you, okay. All right. I'll do that. Yeah, eventually. I'll read us out of here then. Uh, as always, Dialers for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. You can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. And remember, you can use Dial Five for five percent off your future Cool Stuff Inc. orders. All right. Well, everyone. Uh, have a happy Easter. If you celebrate Easter, spend time with your family and or at your church. If you do not celebrate Easter, just have a happy Sunday. Have a good week, guys. Okay, uh, good catch Sunday. And enjoy Avengers Endgame, because that's going to be Yeah! Happen. By the time we were Bye! Bye! Happy trails. I mean, I mean ASR, ASMR edition. Bye, guys. My, 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 my stuff.